We are at the Red Nico Hotel in Tokyo and I'm about to become a climate reality leader. It's about uh, Vice President Al Gore who, who made this movie, An Inconvenient Truth, which uh, I watched uh, a long time ago. And it's about climate change. And we, we will hear a lot about climate change. I'm, I'm really excited to, to be here. And uh, I'm looking forward to hear solutions and uh, putting this into action afterwards. This slideshow will be much shorter than the one that I gave yesterday. Uh, this one is designed to be only 10 to 15 minutes. While the one yesterday will be too long for most of you to use in your presentations, this one may be too short, but you will be able to have access to both slideshows and you may want to start with the short one and then add some pictures, uh, add some slides from the longer version in order to uh, uh, focus on the particular issues that you think might be of most interest to the audiences that you are communicating with. And bear in mind that sometimes the most important audience for your slideshow may be a single person who is a, a, a mayor or a governor or a member of the diet or a CEO or uh, an influential community leader. Uh, I have given slideshows uh, many times to a single person or to very small groups. But of course, when you can get uh, larger groups to allow you to uh, present this information, then you can reach more people at the same time. In any case, uh, what I am about to present is the short version of the slideshow. This is, the, this is our common home, a picture of the Earth uh, taken by astronauts between the Earth and the Moon. And it is the setting for the challenge we face known as the climate crisis. There are only three questions remaining about the climate crisis. Must we change? Can we change? Will we change? Some of the evidence uh, to support the yes answer to the first question is difficult to hear, but the answers to the second and third question are optimistic and should give us hope. But let's take them one by one. What a surprise to see you also here. Yeah, uh, we we knew each other already. Yeah, and uh, how do you like the event so far? This is excellent. I learned it so much. Uh, is there anything specific you learned yesterday? Right, so we know about this climate crisis. We hear about it in the news. But the small facts that accumulate, that are really affecting us, I feel so much more urge to do something. And you feel more confident to explain how it actually all works yeah, together this time? I learned directly from Mr. Ibor, passionate, yes. some of the public presentation. This means a lot to me. And is there anything you already uh, believe that you yourself you take action after this? Yeah, I 
would definitely like to be one of the ambassadors of this program to communicate to the people around me, but to also to act and lead how I can yeah, we make, met, a, make a difference with the people. And, and, and I think you can. Yeah. So you're actually working for Google, right? So yes, I do. And, and do you think you have a kind of a special leverage doing something? I think so. I strongly yeah. believe and I love my company doing the right thing, also with the sustainability of the company. And I think what I do in my job also needs to be a problem free. Great. So thanks, thanks very much for, for a quick uh, feedback at the conference. And let's, let's see what the board has today. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, Don, uh, we are running the purpose-driven innovation ecosystem. Uh, we care about climate change and we want to uh, trigger innovations. Uh, and uh, I was uh, very positively surprised about this training. And you have been a uh, long time involved already. Maybe you can just briefly explain how you are involved and uh, where you are coming from. So I'm with the University of Melbourne, I'm a professor of sustainability there, but I've been involved in the Climate Reality Project for 10 years now, and I just think it's such a powerful way of informing people about climate science and solutions, but also respecting and equipping people to make change themselves in many different ways, whether it's private sector, public sector, or in their own lives. You have been uh, 10 years involved with the climate reality, but with sustainability already longer time, maybe? So when, when, did, you, when did your interest actually start? In well, in actually when I was at university mm -hmm. uh, in Queensland, I loved the Great Barrier Reef and I loved some of the beautiful national parks and islands uh, offshore from Queensland. Uh, and I got involved when they were threatened with destruction. Mm -hmm. And so that really, I trained in science, but I learned that you can make a difference as an individual. So straight after university, I, I enjoyed working for environment groups, including World Wildlife Fund and others, and have stayed strongly involved in conservation through my university work as well. Do you think that uh, we can actually still do something uh, and we can save these coral reefs and we can do something positive to impact the environment? I think so, and I think in some ways we're privileged, we're lucky, because we have the opportunity to make a big difference over these next 10 years. They'll be crucial. If we don't make that difference, it'll be much harder for the generation that follows us. So I think we're the privileged generation. We can make a huge difference. We need to bring pollution down. We need to encourage innovation in the private sector, yeah. in our societies, in our own lifestyles, so that we very quickly bring pollution levels right down and do a lot of restorative action as well with environment repair around the world and shifting economies and business into clean economies. Great. So you, you, um, it's the first time you're doing this event in Japan. Uh, what do you expect in the future from Japan and what, what is your view in general about uh, the capabilities of Japan and what would you recommend to Japanese people how to actually act accordingly to uh, do their part because it's the third largest economy in the world so it, they play an important role yeah. actually. I think Japan plays a really crucial role with climate change and it's, it's a double role. One is Japan is very important on the international stage and it would really help the world if Japan's voice was out there for stronger action on climate change, more efforts to reduce pollution, more efforts to build clean economies and help people in their daily lives for happiness and well-being. I think the other side of that is there are challenges here in Japan, but Japan's a country of great innovation. Yeah. And there's a need and an opportunity to innovate here to ensure clean energy from renewable power, a cleaner the economy with clean energy, energy efficiency, use of electric vehicles and other opportunities to get emissions right down. And of course that helps with people's well-being because if you yes. have less pollution <laughs> you're healthy too. Right, and they call it uh, Society 5.0. I don't know if you have heard about this kind of future vision. What is your take on this? Well, I think it's a great vision and I think we should, uh, well, we're already started on the path to deliver that vision and I think uh, Japan has such a strong role to play as a clever nation, an innovator, great with technology. It's time for leadership now, uh, domestically and internationally from Japan and that will help the world. At the moment the climate reality doesn't have any structure here in Japan, right? So are you looking to build up something here and, and so what, what are your next steps actually? After so this event? is the first climate reality training mm. in Japan, which I think is wonderful. People have been asking from Japan for quite a while for a training here. There are very fine organizations and initiatives across community, private sector and government here in Japan. They can be strengthened 
uh, I think it'll be quite interesting to see if the people that go through this training, if they want to form a branch here or strengthen the efforts. But I certainly hope that everybody will take home the learning and the inspiration yes. and use it in their own lives. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. And finally, I want to thank all of you again for traveling here, for dedicating two full days here to educate yourselves and make these pledges to act. I look forward to hearing about the many presentations that you give, the acts of leadership that you complete, and the exciting efforts that you will be leading in your local communities. Uh, in closing, I will simply say that we as human beings have never faced a challenge remotely similar to the challenge that is made up of the climate crisis. We do have the solutions. We have uh, the opportunity to make decisions and take actions today uh, that will resonate far into the future. At some point, uh, decades from now, the next generation will have an opportunity to make an assessment of whether we succeeded or not. And depending upon the world in which they find themselves, they will ask one of two questions. Uh, if they live in a world that is beset with the many problems and horrific consequences of the climate crisis that the scientists have been warning us about, if we have failed them, if they see waves of hundreds of millions of climate refugees and the loss uh, uh, of land uh, in low-lying uh, areas and the abandonment of low-lying cities, uh, the loss of territory, uh, tropical diseases, spreading droughts, and uh, the disruption of the water cycle, destroying uh, the output of agriculture. Uh, if they see political uh, chaos and disruption and they see that their lives are being degraded uh, and that their prospects are looking worse year by year. They look at their own children and uh, don't know what to tell them about the future. If those are the circumstances that, that we bequeath to them, they would be more than justified in looking back through time at us in this place and time and asking, what were you thinking? How could you have done this? How could you have failed to act? But there is another a possibility. If they find themselves in circumstances filled with hope, if they see tens of millions of new jobs being created in a collective effort to improve the quality of life, to clean up the air and the water, and to sharply reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and to begin the long process of recovery, and to implement the adaptations that will be necessary, to enjoy the improved quality of life that clean the technologies and sustainable choices will provide. I want them to look back at us here, in this place, in this time, and ask how did you find the moral courage to rise up and shake off the lethargy and stand up to make the decisions that were necessary to build a bright future. And part of the answer will be that 800 women and men from every part of Japan came together for two days of fellowship to build community, to learn, and to make a shared commitment to create a bright future. We have that capacity, and the effort starts now. So in closing, from the bottom of my heart, Domo Arigato. Yeah, so we, we have it done two days at the Climate Reality Program with uh, former Vice President Al Gore. And it was quite overwhelming, especially the passion of uh, Al Gore, how he described uh, climate change. He described uh, not only the symptoms, but he came to solutions. And uh, he mixed emotion and facts together, so, uh, which was uh, very convincing. And uh, I want to take these elements and put this into action 
with our purpose-driven innovation ecosystem by finding these innovations which actually enable uh, lasting change and which will shift our society to a decarbonized society, not only from the energy point of view, but also in other areas as well. So uh, and one important uh, thing I want to say is that we can only do this together. So I really invite everybody to collaborate uh, and let's do something together.